covered with free light refreshments right here at the Dominion Center at 9 a.m. Come on out and join us for a free cup of coffee or tea. If you'd like to start your day off bringing heaven into the earth with other believers, you can do so by simply dialing 605-475-4000, access code 575169-POUND. Dominion family, don't forget to opt in for our latest news and emergencies. You can do so by texting Living in Dominion to 55469. That's Living in Dominion to 55469. Dominion family, join us on our Dominion app. You can download this free app by going to our Google Play Store or our Apple Store. Just simply click on to the Dominion Center and download. This is a way to stay social with your church family and continue sharing what God is doing in your life. Family, we need you. In order for our church to function and flourish at its optimum level, we need everyone vested. Remember, the whole is greater than the part. So share your gifts, talents, and abilities with our helps ministry. We are better together when we have enough loving people serving. So go over to the media table directly at the service and sign up. We thank you in advance. Dominion family and friends, have you been enjoying the messages lately? Or stop over at the media table and get the message on the go. You can get these messages on CD, DVD, or MP3. Or simply go to livingindominion.com. That's livingindominion.com. Kingdom citizens, get ready for our 2018 Kingdom Now Gathering with Apostle S.C. Johnson. You are not going to want to miss this awesome fellowship and move of God. Invite all your family and friends right here at the Dominion Center on Thursday, April 26th and Friday, April 27th at 7 p.m. Then on Saturday, we'll continue our fellowship with our Sabbath service at 11 a.m. Please RSVP to 55469. That's 55469. Then we'll be right back here on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We are expecting a powerful move of God like never before. Hope to see you there.
glad in it. As we lift our hands, we lift our hands. You are the lifter of our soul. It is your life-giving power that has changed us forever. We thank you for the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, being shed upon the cross. And we just give you praise and glory that even today in this service, you will manifest your presence where bodies will be healed, minds will be regulated, hearts will be mended, lives will be brought back together. And Father, we thank you right now for every single person that is here, for we are better together. And as we grab one another by the hand, we squeeze strength, we squeeze love, we squeeze power into their hand, into their lives. And as I, when I let go of their hands, their life will be the better because I will decree a thing over their life and it shall be established. And we give you praise and glory for it. Even now in the name of Yeshua, Jesus the Christ, we say amen. 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 Right quick, I want you to go and hug as many people as you can. Come on, hug as many people as you can get your loving arms around, which means it's going to require that you, that you move a little bit, that you move a little bit. Amen, amen. We want to welcome those of you who are on Facebook Live. Bless you. We're going to, we want to welcome those of you who are on Facebook Live. I got a little feedback up here. <clears throat> want to welcome y'all. Amen. All right. We've been, we've, been, we've been teaching on our series on wisdom. Oh, y'all giving up the love today. All right. <laughs> Amen. As you go back to your seats, I want you to just Open your mouth and, and just shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Come on, you can do better than that. Amen. 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 If you got if you got keyboards in any of the auxiliaries, turn them down for me, please. Amen. All right, let's let's get down to business. Good to see everybody today. We're gonna get right to the word. Uh, let's go to James chapter one. Verse 5 and 6, and we want to see James chapter 1, verse 5 and 6 in the Amplified. Amen? 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 Y'all ready? James 1, 5 and 6, Amplified, says, If any of you is deficient in wisdom... Let him ask of the giving God who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly without reproaching or fault finding. And it will be given him only it must be in faith that he acts with no wavering, no hesitation, no doubting. For the one who wavers, hesitates, doubts is like the billowing surge out at sea that is blowing hither and thither, and tossed by the wind. He's saying, so when you do ask for wisdom, you got to ask in faith. You can't doubt. Are y'all here? Yes. Somebody say, you got to ask in faith. You cannot doubt. Because when the Most High speaks to you, he's probably, in most cases, going to speak something that is not comfortable with your heart. Amen? So you got to have faith that he knows better than you. And so you gotta you gotta ask in faith, no wavering, no hesitating, no doubting. For the one who wavered, hesitates, doubts is like the wind, the billowing surge out at at sea that is blown hither and thither and tossed by the wind. So the Most High is gonna. How many people in here? When whenever whenever the Most High speaks to you, He always speaks to you in a way that challenges your perspective. It challenges your thinking. It challenges your understanding on specific things. Am I the only person that He challenges? your way of doing things and he's challenging that because how many people know that my thoughts are not his thoughts my ways are not his ways high as the heavens are from the earth me and his thoughts are on just totally different ends of the spectrum amen amen, amen. so we've been teaching you all that wisdom and make sure you put the volumes where they need to be did you do that uh okay wisdom is the capacity to see things from the most highest perspective and to respond according to scriptural principles. 
All right? We're going to say that together. I need y'all to just, you know, indulge me for a moment. Just say wisdom is, wisdom is the, capacity the capacity to see things, see things. from the most highest perspective, most highest perspective. And, respond and respond according to scriptural principles. We're going to do that again. They're sound checking the, uh, the uh, uh, crowd mics. Uh, let's try this again. We're sound checking, which means you got to have your headset on, young fella, to sound check it. <laughs> Come on, say it with me. Wisdom is, Wisdom is the, capacity the capacity to see things, to see things. from the most highest perspective, most highest perspective. And, respond according and respond according to scriptural principles. Which means if I'm going to operate in wisdom or the wisdom of the most high, I have to know his word. Uh, in Christendom, and I say that lightly, but I'm using a word that most people understand. Uh, Christendom, we find that they're the most illiterate people scripturally. Because most of us, our experience in Christendom has been from an emotional perspective. And so even when we get into scriptural discussions, most of us, our response is from emotion and not from biblical truth. While most other religions in the earth are not responding emotionally, they, we respond emotionally and most of them are being witnesses, which means if you talk to a Muslim, they're able to witness or to tell you not just what they believe, but why they believe it. Amen. If you talk to a Jehovah's Witness, they can not just tell you what they believe, but they can tell you why they believe it. Most people who are in Christendom, they can tell you what they believe, but can't tell you why they believe it. The truth of the matter is then when what they say they believe is challenged, for the most part, especially through life situations, what happens is they end up responding like they've done all throughout their relationship with the most high. They respond through life to life challenges through emotions. And therefore they're not a witness to what they say they believe. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. Most of y'all in here, you believe you should love your neighbor as yourself, right? Amen. Right. Do you always respond in kind? Right. Most of y'all have a ton of scriptures that you believe or you say you believe but the belief uh, uh, of that scripture is going to be tested uh, by the trials of life. And then we're going to find out if you are more than just a believer, but you are a witness of that which you say you believe because you understand it, which means you understand that what is happening to you right now is to prove you believe what you say you believe. He's not looking for emotional people. He's looking for people who can be a witness. Y'all ain't going to help. Y'all ain't saying that. Somebody say you got to be a witness. Which means I can't witness something I don't know. Or I can't witness to something I don't know. And part of me knowing it is not just having the ability to quote a scripture, but to live that scripture when a situation arises. Yes. Even if it's something as simple as a business opportunity. I cannot make a decision out of my emotions. I have to make a decision based on the word of the most high. I ain't going to get no help up in here. That's all right. And so he says, if you lack wisdom... If you lack the ability to take information that you say you understand and apply it, ask of him who is the giving God who gives to everyone liberally and ungrudgingly without reproach or fault finding. You are just a question away. Amen. Amen. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you are just the right question away. Yes, yes, yes. And then responding to the answer yes. in regards to seeing your life turn around for the better. Y'all ain't saying that. Somebody say wisdom wins. wisdom wins. Come on, say it again. Say wisdom wins. wisdom wins. And the world has multiple ways of thinking and many different philosophies, but not all of those philosophies are in line with the most high's word. And mankind has developed its own particular set of values and standards. But because the devil rules this world, he is the, he is the ruler of this world, secular ways of thinking have become tainted. And we have to understand letting down our guard leaves us open to the high thoughts of the world, which can take over and hijack the thoughts of the most high that should be dominating our lives. And we run into trouble when we begin to trust in our own thoughts and emotions instead of what the most high has said in his word. Y'all ain't saying nothing. 
And so, you know, I was telling them on yesterday, according to the doctors, my mother's expiration date should have been in 1991 when she was diagnosed with cancer and they were telling her she had six months to live. Had she not tapped into the wisdom of God, she would have believed the report that was given to her. But here's the thing. Nobody knows your expiration date, so you don't have to receive one when they give it to you. Are you hearing? When you know the word, and when I say you know it, you believe it, and you are actively engaged in it, you don't buckle when trouble comes. You know that he's a present help in the time of trouble. And sometimes what you perceive help is you're looking for him to give you a miracle and he's looking for you to respond to his word when you get tested in a particular area so that he can release your miracle. I ain't getting no help in here. And so when, when they told her that she was going to die and that her time would be up in six months, she began to go back to the word. She began to operate in wisdom, which is the application of what? Knowledge. She took the information she had from the word and she quoted scriptures like Psalms 118 and 7. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Y'all ain't going to help me. She quoted Isaiah 53 and 5, and he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquity, and the chastisement of my peace was upon him, and by his stripes I am, I were, I was, I is healed. Amen. That's okay. Y'all will catch up in a minute. And so if you have a relationship with the most high only from an emotional perspective, you are going to be led by your emotions when trouble comes. But when you have a real relationship, you will not be an emotional mess. You will be a witness to the truth that you, y'all ain't going, that you've gleaned from his word. And not just because you read it or somebody told you, because you've had legitimate experiences for yourself. Who in here knows him as a healer? You have to apply that knowledge when you get attacked in your body. Who in here knows him as a provider and a way? I'll talk to somebody else. You have to, atta- you have to apply that knowledge, that which is wisdom, is the application of knowledge. Knowledge is information. You have to apply that when you are in a position of need. You don't say things like, I don't know how I'm going to make it. You should know if you already got the information. And you know that his word is truth and every man is a lie. I ain't got no help up in here. Your shouting and your dancing doesn't suggest you have wisdom. And we've heard people, you know, we use it too. Praise renders results. Praise renders results when you praise with the right understanding. You don't praise because the musicians are hot. You, you understand what I'm saying? You, you praise because you know what the outcome is going to be. Yes. You don't praise because somebody can preach and run through keys. You praise because you know you got the victory even though all hell is breaking loose in your life. I wish I had somebody. Y'all ain't going to help me preach today. See, that, that, that's, that's praising with understanding. That's praising. You, you hear what I'm saying? So when, when you see people praising, you, know, you can't assess why they're praising. But the truth of the matter is while you're watching, maybe you should be praising over something you say you believe in. You know the word on if you know the outcome. See, see then as much as it seems like it's an expression emotionally, it's actually you being rooted in the fact, the truth, excuse me. The truth is that no matter what is happening right now, I absolutely win. Somebody holler wisdom wins. I wish I had three people that would just holler, I absolutely win. No matter what I'm seeing, no matter what is going on, I absolutely win. I have the absolute victory no matter what. Y'all ain't gonna help me. And see, what will happen is then you don't need somebody every time they see you to encourage you. You've already encouraged yourself. Most people that you see that have, have a, a, a strong, righteous di- uh, a disposition or, a, a, or position in God, it's because they understand things that you don't understand. They understand, like like I said, a doctor can't give me an expiration date. It ain't over till the Most High says it's over. No, it's not over till I talk to him and tell him I believe what he's already done is done. Amen. 
You missed it. You, in other words, if he's going to satisfy me with long life, then guess what? That's what my confession is going to be. When I make that confession, guess what? The expiration date that the doctor gave me, it gets pushed back against the doctor's consent. The doctor doesn't have to give me no permission. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You go, I don't have to ask the doctor, well, you know, I think I got No, I got I know that what you said is irrelevant. I'm going to keep showing up to the appointment. I'm showing up to the appointment to let you know what you said is not the final word. Somebody holler, it's not the final word. Do I have somebody in here that believe it? You wouldn't, de- you wouldn't be, de- you would not be depressed if you understood how to apply wisdom. You, you, I'm just so depressed. How are you depressed? I thought you said, you, 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 you was talking about all these visions and dreams the most high give you, gave you. How are you depressed when you know it doesn't end where you're at right now? To have somebody that'll help me preach. Somebody say, don't end right here. So how can you be depressed? I'm so depressed. I'm not depressed. There's a place, there's some places I'm supposed to be. There's some things that I'm supposed to do. The reason why he gave you vision so you can keep going to bed at night. Yeah, it was a bad day, but weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Man, I <laughs> it, it was a bad day. It must mean I'm a little closer to what he said coming to pass. Am I talking to the right people? Am I talking to the right, the right people? Somebody holler, say, hope does not disappoint. So when the Most High gives you a vision, he's giving you something to hold on. We call it hope. Now, the scripture, the scripture even, even gives credence to this. Uh, let me, you know, because I'm, now I'm a little bit off my nose. But the scripture gives credence to this. Put it up. Uh, pray, pray with me. The Holy Ghost is going to give it to me. Holy Ghost, give it to me. Put up Romans chapter 5, I believe it is. And go start, start with the first verse. If I see the first verse, then I know where I need to go. I know where I need to go. It says, okay, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our who? Lord, keep going. It says, by whom also we have access by faith into his, into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Now watch this. It says, listen, come on now, listen, come on. It says, and not only so, but we glory in what? Let me try this again. We glory what? Why are we glorying in tribulations? Knowing that tribulation worketh what? And then patience what? Experience. Come on, come on, roll with me. And patience what? And experience what? Now let's go to number five. We're going to run out of here in a minute. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of what? By the Holy, which is given unto us. He says, he says, we glory in tribulation. Why? Because we already know what the outcome is. The only reason why we're in it is we, we have to be able to tell somebody when they start talking about what they've been through. And you said, I've been there before. I've gotten the experience. Are you hearing what I'm, I've been a what? A witness. I, not, not from an emotional perspective, but I've witnessed what he can do in situations that don't look like they can be worked out. Somebody say he's just building my resume. So that when I tell somebody he's good, it ain't just because I shouted on Sunday he's good. No, he's good and his mercy endures forever because when I should have been consumed, y'all, man, I wish I had three people up in here. You, you running around depressed because you went to the doctors and the blood tests keep coming back the same. When you go to the doctors the next time, you should praise. Not because the blood test came back the same because you didn't die with the bad blood. You missing what I'm saying. You missing what I'm saying. Which means if you were able to go back to the doctors again, it means you ain't gone yet. And the doctor, somebody say it again, and, 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 and the doctor's getting ready at any moment to tell you something different. You just got to keep going back so you can tell somebody, I've been through what you've been through. I had to go back to the doctors over and over and over again. But when I went back, I kept the same confession over and over. The next time I get my blood test, it's going to be like this. The next time, man, you don't change what... What you say, they ain't changing what they're saying. So you keep saying the same thing. Because I'm telling you, somebody's testimony got to change. And it ain't going to be So it must mean the doctor has something different. I- Thank you. 
Man, I can't get no help up in here. You need to slap somebody high five and say wisdom wins. Don't panic at no doctor's report. He practicing medicine. You need to take in that word, which is, which is health to all your flesh. The, the, the proverb Solomon said is health to all your flesh. The word health was translated to medicine to all your flesh, all your bones. You know what's crazy? You won't, you won't take the word and apply it. But a doctor can give you a prescription and you don't know anything about the side effects and you'll take that and you'll take that from the word of a man who's admitting he's practicing on you. And then he will cover himself from a legal perspective after the medicine will made you sick and switch you to another one. And and you will rock hard with a joker guessing about your life rather than someone who gave you life. And since he gave you, you will literally submit yourself to the wisdom of this world, which is flawed. You ever, you ever had some medicine you was taking and a commercial came on and you. <laughs> Corp didn't get that medicine for me. Right? What? No wonder I'm feeling like this. No wonder you, were, you, were, you, did, yeah, your blood pressure went down, but now you got jaundice. <laughs> did I say it right? I might've said it wrong. You, your blood pressure went down, but now they're talking about this blood. The side effect does it is slow your heart down and cause resp- You mean to tell me for my blood pressure to go down, I got to take something that's going to stop me from breathing? This just happened to somebody I know this week. Taking a bunch of medicines that the doctor gave them and it stopped their heart for five minutes. And like I told them on the phone Friday, even if Satan tries to use medicine to kill you, he can't take you up out of here. Because even the medicine cannot decide your expiration date. Notice, notice it says, and hope maketh not ashamed. Put it on, make sure it's on the screen. On The hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto you. Have you ever, have, see, hope maketh not ashamed. I believe, try to amplify this, says hope does not disappoint. That when God gives you vision or insight into your future, he's saying that what I showed you is fixed, it's established, and it will not disappoint you. Such hope never what? Then back it up with his word, and it's not good. In other words, it's not going to disappoint. The word this means to undo. It's not going to undo the appointment. That what you see in front of you is not going to stop you from making it to the place he's called you unto. Man, I wish I had. Am I talking to the right people? You've been through things before and you didn't think you were going to make it and you're still here. Because when he speaks something, he's not speaking something from the perspective of it might happen. He's telling you. and gone into your future and put it all together and then comes and talks to you about it and says, I declare the end from the beginning. Man, I I came to preach to the wrong... uh, He says, I... When I don't already showed you the outcome, what I... be undone. I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you, towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil and have given you un, an expected end. Somebody say I'm expected to be somewhere and I'm going to get there safely. We talked yesterday and was teaching on Passover. Yesterday we talked about the seven blessings of Passover and the first one we talked about is divine protection. That as you honor the Passover, he's going to give you divine protections. He, he, protection. He's going to send angels to, to prepare the way for you. Yeah. You hearing what I'm saying? So that if he spoke it, he's already made sure the path to it is already done. Yeah. Amen. Amen. 
What if, what if you stopped seeing obstacles and saw angels? Mm-hmm. What, what if, like Mary, she had the chance to experience when she showed up to Jesus to poker, she saw the obstacle that was keeping them in the grave rolled away and an angel of the Lord sitting on it? Look at somebody and say, you, you don't have to worry. What's, what's been trying to kill you is getting ready to be rolled away. And instead of seeing it as an obstacle, you need to see the angel on it who's in place to make sure your way has been prepared. Man, I, man, I wish I had somebody else. Notice he didn't remove the stone himself because, listen, if, if he removed it himself, it would suggest that you got to remove yours yourself. No, 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 no. He, he had an angel come from heaven and remove it. And I'm telling you, everything you see in front of you, when you get there, your angel is going to already move it. See, what he says, wisdom says, I know the word and I know the outcome. And what I'm going to do is instead of complaining, and if I'm going to be emotional, it won't be sad. It won't be unhappy. It won't be anger. It's going to be one of joy because this joy that I have, and they sure can't take it away from me. Do I have anybody that's not praising from an emotional perspective, but you're praising because you know you got the absolute victory in every area of your life? If you know it, shout wisdom wins. Some of y'all are catching up. Some of y'all are catching up. You, you don't want to give up your right to be depressed. Because you like pity parties, but I like victory parties. <laughs> and let me tell you something. You ain't got to invite people to a victory party. Are you hearing what I'm saying? How many people in here, you've had some victory parties all by your... Mm-hmm. When you depressed, you need people. But when you know who he is and who you are in him, you don't need... Y'all ain't going to help me. You can encourage yourself. David could have had a pity party in in 1 Samuel 30 because they spake a stone to him. These were the same people he helped. These were the people he let out of debt. These were the people he let out of bondage. They were the derelicts of society. They were bums. They were were hiding in the cave of Adullam. But it was David who went in there while he was on the run from two kings, the king of the Philistine and the king of Israel. And while he was on the run from them because they were looking to assassinate him, he walks in the cave and he writes Psalms 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise it shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear and be glad. He said, fellas, you in here, all four of y'all, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Wait a minute. Are you the David that got two nations after you? Yes, and I'm still praising because I know he told me I was going to be king. So I ain't worried about Saul. He just keeping my seat warm. And t- Man, I can't get nobody. Look at somebody say, stop tripping over your supervisor. They're keeping your seat warm. There's about to be a cataclysmic shift that's going to take place in the life. And the same person that's fighting you is the same person that the most high is going to use to promote you. But you got to know that promotion comes not from the east or the west, but it comes from him. And what you got to understand is after you suffer and you've done the will of God, you shall receive. Y'all look at you, you don't even know. You shall receive the promise that, listen, this is just the way to the promise. I got to go through this so I can get what he said. Now you embrace it. You start embracing trouble. Here it comes. We glory in tribulation because we know he's about to push his weight around in this situation. We, 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 we glory. We thank Look at some of y'all. You, you've been so used to you've been so used to speaking and it's accepting your tribulation and not understanding your tribulation is just a road to the promise. Y'all ain't coming. The fact that you're going through hell on the way to it means it's more real. We glory, he said, in tribulation, because we know it work is patience, and patience, experience, and experience hope. So we don't panic and get all emotional. We understand this is just the back alley to the promise. What alley you know is pretty? What 
alley do you know of in most cases, not but one car at a time can go through it. So the truth of the matter is, you have to understand in the alley, or let me make it, to, in the valley, you got to go through it by yourself. But there's an entrance and an exit. And all you got to do is walk towards the exit. Man. I wish I had somebody that would help me up in here. We should be on guard for deceit and any philosophies that go against the most high's word. We have to be careful what we think. Thoughts and concepts are um, pervasive and powerful. Colossians 2 and 8 in the Amplified, it says, so it says, see to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy in empty deception and pseudo intellectual babble according to the tradition and misusing of mere men following the elementary principles of this world rather than following the truth, the teaching of Christ. When somebody starts talking and it's not word, I don't care how how deep and wonderful they sound, don't buy it. Tons of people can maneuver and and, and speak well and all eloquent. Don't mean they saying anything worth anything. Y'all seen it for years with the presidents. They teach them how to talk nothing. You'd be like, so what what is he going to do? You know, from what I can tell, he didn't give us the solution. He just just talked around the problem, and we're we're going to address it. When? And they don't know the answer. That's why they can't give you an answer. What Donald Trump know about politics? Nothing. He can't give you no answer, and he ain't even smart enough to read what people that know write. You know the presidents that most people loved was because they were just good pe- people that could read other people's stuff well. Reagan didn't know what he was talking about. He just was an actor and was used to reading teleprompters. Obama was smooth with it. But at the end, if you ask most people, especially our people, you know, he was a great president. Why? What did he do? You believe something, but you don't know why. What was, what did he do? And from my perspective, now I'm going to get in trouble. I ain't going to do it today. I ain't going to do it today. But I tell you what, there's a whole lot of things and standards of the word that he violated. <laughs> so when you say he was a great president, from what perspective? From the most highest perspective? From the wisdom of the most highest perspective? That's why I say you don't even know what you believe. You'll agree with somebody who don't agree with the most high. That's why I don't get caught up in philosophies and, and deceit. Yeah, yeah, that's what the script, we, we, we are in spiritual warfare. And we should not let ourselves be carried off as spoils and made captive by intellectualism and nonsense. I, y'all ain't saying nothing no more. Truth is, we all have a philosophy. Whether we know it or not, a philosophy is, is, a, is a basic set of ideals, beliefs, and values that we live by. But most of us, what we have as a philosophy or values of belief in regards to what we believe and who we are, more than likely don't even truly come together. Okay, I'll give you an example. Most of us in here, if I say to you, who in here believes in having sex before marriage? Most of y'all who grew up in Christendom will say, me. How many of y'all had it? You ain't got to show your hands. So what you say you believe or your philosophy is not always who you are. Man, come on, man. You'll tell your kids you, 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 you shouldn't lie. It's wrong. But then you would have that same kid tell the bill collector you ain't there. What you believe and who you are are usually very far apart. I ain't going to get no help up in here. That's why we can be deceived by the philosophies of men because we're used to living lies, so we rock with their lies. Because you know what? They sound good. What he's saying feels good to me. I like what he's saying, but is what he's saying right? Right. 
I believed you shouldn't have kids until you're married. I was really far. We all have a philosophy. We all have a belief system. We all have things. See, now we're getting quiet now because we're getting into a message again of responsibility. So when we get into those type of messages, we don't get no response. A ton of people say they don't believe in smoking. Smoke. I was a part of the D.A.R.E. program. <laughs> and I believed it in sixth grade, but then I found out I really didn't believe it. Because if I don't believe in drugs, I don't ever believe in it. Amen. Stop saying you don't believe in drugs because you didn't smoke weed or you didn't drink alcohol or you didn't do cocaine or you didn't do heroin, but you take prescriptions. And you take prescriptions that you don't need no more. Come on. I'm trying to show you, 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 you. That's why you can't invest in the philosophy, philosophies of men. Because a lot of us, our philosophy is one thing, but who we are is a whole nother thing. Man, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. I knew, I knew y'all, I knew, you know, y'all was hyped up for a minute. Now we don't lost you. See, our philosophy affects how we view life and the decisions we make. That's the reason why someone can get you to do wrong because you already violate what you believe. Did they deceive you or you walked into it already deceived? My husband is going to be like this, he's going to be like this, he's going to be like this, he's going to be like this. My wife is going to be like this, my wife is going to be like that. You better stop doing that. You got, you, you got, too, you got too high of a standard. So you take your standard, you throw it down, and you pick up the philosophy of someone else. And the reason why you were able to do that is because you were just saying something you heard and not something you believed. Because let me ask you this, if, if you didn't get married till you were 40, but it was to the person that Most High has ordained, Come on, somebody. would it be worth it to not go through a, 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 a tw- from your 20s to 40, pure hell, yeah. trying to do stuff in your own strength? Yeah. And some of y'all, you know what I mean, you went through enough hell yeah. where you're saying waiting is not going to hurt me. Because yeah. when I did it my way, I did enough to myself already. Now, some of y'all hotter than six boxes of cayenne pepper. So you have, you have, you have become addicted to the hurt because you believe that's all you're worth. When you get in that word and you start, you start, you start discovering who you are, your standard starts raising. And not just what you believe, but you started to come up and live above the standard. Amen. Amen. Y'all don't got quiet now. Who in here, you, you, have, you have violated your own philosophies in regards to what you believe in, according to the word, enough. Till it's not going to happen no more. You're going to let wisdom win in your life. Now, some of y'all, y'all having an emotional response now because it sounds good. Oh, yeah, God. Hallelujah. When you walk out of this door, it's wisdom going to win. Amen. Are you going to tell T-Bone he got to get your, his stuff out your house? Amen. Y'all ain't going to help me? Because I, I, I don't live with people I'm not married to. See, look, I don't lost it. See that? I don't know who living with who. You know. Well, he said we're going to get married. Well, until y'all get married, he got to move out. I thought you said wisdom was going to win. Y'all been, y'all been dating forever. (laughs) 
he been, y'all been living together forever. He don't pay no bills because it was your place when you moved in and you upset because you think he should, but why should he? Because he don't, he don't have no, um, he don't have responsibility and he don't want it. And he don't have to because you don't, he, 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 listen, he wants relationship without responsibility and you cool with it as long as he gets you all right a couple times. Come on, man. I, look, look. Cause what you believe and who you are are really far apart. At some point, you got to think you're worth more than Amen. somebody just smashing here and there. What does he really think about you when the only time you wonderful was in the dark? You miss what I, you miss that. You 40 and you still referring to him as your friend. Cause he hit you with the old okie doke and said, we too old to be talking about we boyfriend and girlfriend. And when you say stuff like he's my friend, it's telling other people he on the market still cause he is. Or vice versa. Come on, teach, Bishop. Teach. Amen. But you embrace the philosophies of this world because that's what everybody's doing now. Amen. Biz Mark told y'all years ago, oh, baby, you got what I need. But you say he's just a friend. You say, he's like, I'm telling you, honey, I could take it to that next level, but you, you, you chasing after this guy who say just, he telling you, I want relationship without responsibility. In this country, you got to have a dog license. When you get that dog, you got to, the dog can't work. Dog can't even clean his own poop up. And you got a man that will treat a dog better than he would a woman. He even walk his dog. And he don't take you nowhere in public. I'm going to wrap it up. 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 He'll let everybody know this is dog. But he won't let nobody know you his wife, you his woman. But you know, it makes sense to you because you living in a time where anything goes. But at some point in your life, you got to take responsibility for yourself. And what you say you know. I got to go. <laughs> He'll wipe up for a dog, but if you get sick, he won't bring you a bowl of soup. I'm preaching way better than y'all saying amen. amen. When a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. That means she was already somewhere becoming a wife. And you can't become a wife while you're somebody else's friend. that he, he obtains favor from the Lord, yes. of the Lord. Amen. Any man with some real sense, I, this ain't even, I don't know why I'm on this, it ain't in my notes, any man with some real sense understands the help 
a woman is to his life and how she enhances it and makes it better. I'll use just some simple. See, 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 the truth of the matter is that you can own a house, but it will never become a home until you give it to a woman and let her incubate that thing. And when she give it back to you, she'll give you a home. You understand what I'm saying? It, 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 you know, a woman can, t- listen, let me tell you something about real women like my mama. Let me tell you something about my grandmama. Let me tell you about something about my wife, Michelle. I'm telling you, we could be in a situation that we have been where we had no money. And my wife can walk in there and look in that cabinet. And what I didn't see is a meal. She can look in that thing. I, I in here. She'll look in that cat and the kids would be going, hey, nothing to here to eat, mama. And all of a sudden, we start smelling stuff. We, what, what's going on here? And, 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 they, and I'm saying, baby, what, what, what happened? Somebody brought, no, I just went in there and took what was in there. And, and then you'd be eating, you'd be like, well, my God, I ain't no corn could be this good mixed with some, with some. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. I've had these conversations with my daughters, so it's going to sound crass, but I'm not trying to sound crass. I didn't mean to use the word crass. It just came out, but I'm sorry. It's going gonna, it's gonna to sound terrible. It's going to sound disgusting to some of y'all because y'all are wonderful, but y'all talk so disgusting outside of here. Again, remember? That that thing between your legs is diamond. That's a diamond. Amen. Unless that joker's a jeweler, he he shouldn't be touching it. Because he don't even know how to take care of it. Y'all thinking from a sexual perspective, he don't know the value of it. And that the truth of the matter is, is when he enters into his woman who is a virgin and breaks the Heimlich and she sheds the blood, he doesn't realize the reason why she's favored because the blood is of her life is on his life. I got to go. 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 And what they just did is they cut covenant. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to leave it alone. Let me leave. That's why you can't you you can't have a real relationship with somebody because you're still relating mentally to everybody else that got that got your blood on them. Yeshua knew exactly who he was shedding his blood for. Who you shed your blood for? I gotta go. I, I really don't, cause it, cause you see what happened. People don't come back. They they don't come. Our philosophies affect how we view life and dis- the decisions we make. So we can't be robbed or kidnapped by the tradition of men. Instead, we are to view our lives through the lenses of the Most High. Analyze When you analyze the word philosophy, um, you get an understanding of its true implication. It refers to the elevation of human wisdom over the Most High's wisdom. And human wisdom is limited. So many people can't even comprehend the ideals and thoughts found in the word. Because except he revealed it through the Holy Spirit, the word remains a mystery. Are y'all here? So the world will not understand even the preaching of the cross. When you have, have you ever tried to explain who the most high is to you and through you to somebody who, 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 who is a secular humanist? And people who are second humanists, these are people who, who believe that they can be morally right and, and righteous without the help of the Most High. But they forgot that in us dwells no... Y'all, yeah. 
<laughs> Where y'all at today? I believe that's, you know, so be your authentic self. Remember to be yourself. No, remember to be who you are in him. Amen. You got to even, you got to rid yourself from them type of statements. Be yourself. What does that mean? Because it's excluding, say it again, it's excluding him. Be yourself, be your authentic self. Do you know the authentic me? <laughs> you having a problem dealing with the new me. If you know the authentic me, some of y'all, you, 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 you need to let people know, you, I've changed a lot more than you think. You think I'm crazy still? <laughs> no, I was really crazy before, before this moment. I was a, uh, you, 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 well, you always going off. No, I used to just beat people up. <laughs> I am growing from faith to faith. <laughs> How many people in here, you have not been your authentic you in a while, but if, have you ever had it just, it, it was like, uh, come uh, Get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind. <laughs> Let me try this again. I'm trying to see. Only, only those that can be honest. <laughs> Even the new struggling you is better than the authentic you. Because of struggling you, the reason why there's a struggle is you're trying to conform to the image of his son. Right? So you, 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 you're, you're, in a, you're in a transition. And, and you need to, you know, sometimes you need to let people know, you should be glad that I'm transitioning and being transformed and conformed to the image of his son. Now, you may not know what that means. But believe me, I have some witnesses. That's why the people that knew the authentic you, they say stuff like, man, Larry, you don't change. Ellis, you so much different than you used to be. Yeah, I don't kick doors down anymore. <laughs> Ellis said, kick, this is years ago. Somebody said, years ago. Yeah. Ellis said, kick the door down. They called me. He's like, yo, you need to come over and get your boy. He kicked the door down. I said, I ain't coming over there. When, when you listen, when you kick a door, the front door to a house off, and all of the framing comes with it, why am I coming over there? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try it again. When you get home, run and try to kick your front door down, and uh, and try to kick it into the house. You're gonna be like, Ugh, that didn't work. If you just go. but we ain't that cool. Because when you get to that point, you don't, know, you, you go off, you, he going to kick me in the chest, then we going to have a problem after I get up a few days later. Because the whole authentic me don't forget. And I'm going to catch you, I'm going to be right in the bushes. There you go. Yeah. There you go right there. Now he, he kicked the door down. He kicked me down. I've been down for three or four days. So I'm either going to hit him with this sludge hammer or with this sludge hammer, but he going down today. The authentic me, if I lost, I kept coming back fighting until I won. But now the authentic me applies the wisdom of God out of Exodus 14 and 14. Y'all ain't going to help me. Let's put it up so you can understand. This, this, how, this, how, this how it works. When you know when you know the word and you know the power. So Exodus 14 and 14, it says, the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. See, see, there, there's a, so what you don't understand is the authentic me has been crucified. Because there was a time I didn't wait for him to fight. I figured he took too long. I need to take care of it myself. But wisdom wins. See, the authentic me didn't live by Psalms 46 and 10. Why am I able to quote these scriptures? Because I've had to quote them until they became a part of my new DNA. 
when, when, he, when he says, come on, put it up there, young fella. I, when he says, be still and know that I am God. And I will be exalted among the heathen and I will be exalted in the earth. Y'all ain't going to help me. That, that goes along with the scripture which says, when your ways please the Lord, even your enemies will be at peace with you. Let me tell you something. When you become who you need to be and you apply wisdom, folk will testify about you to other people. Amen. Fran ain't nothing like she used to be. She must know something that I don't know. Man, I wish I had. I ain't got no, I'm trying to close, but y'all ain't helping me get out of here. Anybody in here, there is some word in you that is restraining you from being who you used to be, doing what you used to do. That's the application of wisdom, that I not just have the information, but I'm walking in it, and its power is flowing in my life. Woo! Somebody say he's a better fighter than me. He's me. He knows how to get glory. But when I try to take care of it myself, I'm a glory stealer. Yes. Yes. And I don't want to steal his glory, but I sure want to share in it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Do I have a witness in the building? Listen, I got more word, but I'm out of time. I'm out of time. I got more word, but I'm out of time. Y'all ain't going to help me. If you're watching on Facebook Live, feel free to click the link and, and sow a donation. We're getting ready to shut it down. Make sure you come to visit us at the Dominion Center on 1270 Scottsville Road, where we are empowering people and what, y'all? Changing lives. Bless your Facebook. Y'all stand to your feet. Thank you for watching. YouTubers, Please subscribe, click the notification bell, like and share. If you're watching us on Facebook Live, simply join the Dominion Center page by clicking like, then like the video, comment, and share the video. Thank you.